Race 26 coming out to the line. Colin Earl on 28 points goes in this one. Alan Rossiter on 34 points also goes. So uh, looks to be the favourite at this point. But uh, let's see. Here we go. Looks like Phil Ashcroft making a good start on the far side. They read 1, 5, 8, 172, 51, 23, 374, 65, and 6. Race 27 coming up. Three changes in this one, or rather three non-starters. Tim Fay, John Cook, and John Wilson. Two additions to replace two of those riders. Number 82, Darren Matthews, and number 72, Kevin Teagoe. Andy Smith, the leader of the competition thus far in qualifying points, goes in this race. Sorry, team are ready, they're away. Looks like Jonathan Tim is making a good start.
Adrian Mower, and in seventh place, number 178, Mike Eels. And the winner's time, 1 minute 23.3. 1 minute 23.3. Those numbers read again, 135, 7, 72, 32, 82, 154, 178. Time again, 1 minute 23.3. Race 28 coming up. Rod Winterburn, a non-starter. 282, Mike Dowling from Bristol takes his place. Paul Hurry goes in this one. Paul in the joint second place in the competition at the start of these fourth legs. situation getting very very interesting I've been handed the points as you said earlier from the results up to and including the third legs well I think as most people probably aware Paul Pinfold and Gary Moon have 21 points three maximum seven point scores Neville Pinfold and Mark Wells are four points behind them they're on 17 points Craig Cheatham sits on 16 points and Dave Steer sits on 15 points. That's where the cut-off line would be if we're talking about the uh, qualifiers at the end of the day. But just below that line, John Horsley on 13 points, Steve Smith on 12 points, Tim Bennett on 12 points, John Hiscock on 11, Pete Colvin on 10, Leonard Ray Foreman on 10, and Mike Cameron on 10. It's very, very close. We've got one more leg of sidecars, the first coming to the line now, this is the fourth leg. We then qualify for the semi-final where more points can be gained, and that's it. Once you've added the points up at the end of the semi-final, then we know who qualifies for the British Masters. So, those that haven't quite made it yet, those sitting on that borderline around that 12 and 13 point bracket, then uh, they've got it all to do in this last ride. Well, we're talking about the points. Those of you that are uh, searching through the programme for an interval, we, uh, I think, are going to have to preempt this one to say that uh, we'll need an interval between the last leg of the sidecars and the first semi-final. Now, that hasn't been agreed officially. That's just me uh, preempting it. <laughs> Everybody else in here seems to agree with me. We need to sort out the points of who goes in the semi-finals. 
So, subject to contrary confirmation from the officials, we're suspecting there will be a brief interval between race 32 and race 33. So those of you that need to visit somewhere, that's when you'll be able to. You won't miss any racing if you go between race 32 and 33. So, race 29 then, the change to the programme that we've been with all afternoon is that Steve Smith comes in in place of Ken Hicks, and it is indeed Steve Smith that's made the break. Steve Perfect has made another good start this afternoon against his target second place going in that race. Steve Smith has made the break and has been in that pit bend as well. Steve Smith and Keith Wall have got away from the rest of the field and look who's making this one theirs. But there's a great scrap going on for this second, third and fourth place. Bill Pickle and Justin Westbury just having a good camera on the outside. second as well. A brilliant back straight from Mike Cameron and Steve Smith. They come very, very wide on this bottom bend and allow Phil Pippen to go back underneath them. So a good ride there from Phil Pippen, the young civil corporal, riding exactly well in the very, very to see them come round, as I'm sure you can imagine, you can see there is a red flag. The race in the interest of safety being brought to a halt. I knew you lot were here. <laughs> so where we go then with the race 29 and of course we're back with a rerun of that race. It is Steve Smith once again. This is the now uh, the position was when we were stopped. It was Steve Smith the So as the afternoon has gone on, as he got used to Rob Wilson's outfit, we of course know in this part of the country that it is a very, very quick machine, handled very, very well, and Steve Smith making the best of it. Good scrap going on for second place now, as you can see. Machinery problems by the look of it, and Steve Smith pulls off at the bottom of the circuit. It means that Neil and Mark Page now go through it. Problems for Chris Terrell and Alan Borlase as they pull into the centre of the circuit. There is one more lap to go, and it's Neil and Mark Page. And Chris Terrell's machinery was battling so well around the outside. He anxiously looks down at the machinery. Let's not take it away from Neil and Mark Page, though. They've made the best of it. They get maximum points. Bill Pittman finishes in second, and Stephen Turner comes through for third. Neil and Mark Page. In second place, number 19, Phil Pittman, Justin Westerway. In third place, number 82, Stephen Turner. And in fourth place, pushing over the line, number 24, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. When it's time, 144.40, 131, 90, 82 and 24. 144.40. Well, into race 30 we go, and while we're talking about maximum point scorers, we get a chance once again to see Paul Pinfold. 
And Peter Jones in action. They're on 21 points. Unbeaten so far this afternoon. They go in race 30 against Red Blackthorn, Bob Baseby, Lennon Ray Foreman. Oh, interesting to see whether Mervyn Richwell will be coming out. If not, I suspect that we will see one of the reserves coming out. And John Halsey goes in this one. So perhaps a chance for John Halsey to score well in this one. Try and chase after Paul Pinfold. Lennon Ray Foreman also on uh, good points at the moment. They've uh, sitting on 10 points at the moment, so good points in this one. We'll do them uh, no problem at all. There'll be 12 riders, of course, that go into that semi final, get a last desperate bite at getting some points to make sure of qualifying. Well, as I look to the line, it does look as if we've. Uh, only got five Elvis going in this one, so indeed the uh, reserve Richard Jenner not being used. Lennon Ray Ford have made the best of that getting in that first order.
so no result for outfit number 26 and number 60 moves up to fourth place it means the result of race 30 reads is 4 one four nine thirteen and sixty we need time 138.02 that of course stays the same Race 31 though, this one promises to be a good one indeed, as all six outfits get underway, they come past us, very, very close indeed, well let's wrap it and tell you there's a go past us, that really was close. As they go into that top bend, I knew this one was going to be close, but I didn't really expect it to be quite like this. A lot of pressure on this particular heat. Dave Steer is making the best of it at the moment. Craig Cheatham has come through. A great one like this from John Hiscock, locking it all up. As you can see, Dave Steer is shutting it all through. I'm sure you're going to see a reaction as I met you trying to put a picture in a moment. But as you can see, that outfit is still on the circuit. So, the red flag being held up because indeed, that outfit is still on the circuit. So, we're going to see all that again. <laughs> Absolutely incredible sidecar racing as they came past us and indeed continued through that first bend. Well, it looked good on paper. I said you'd see a very anxious side of Matthews running right across there in a very few moments. And of course, he's his outfit that Craig Chew has been borrowing this afternoon. One gentleman to the on room as well. Well, indeed, all those outfits make their way back to the line. So, uh, well, the tension getting very, very high on this uh, last sidecar. Heat, as you can well, I say last sidecar here, of course, the last leg of the sidecars. Hell, all those outfits will be again brought back in line. Matthews ran back to the pitch. I think there's something that's going to need a little bit of adjustment or a little bit of work. Coming into line. Anxiously looking to see whether we will see a great Cheatham in line. Doesn't look as if the outfit is being pushed into line. Grid 4 is the one that should be filled. Well, indeed, it does look as if we have only got the five outfits, so no great cheater, but the rest get underway. Would it be much the same as the one we've seen before? All four outfits again, very, very close together as they go into that top bench. John Hiscock has made the best of it.
right up there in the points, of course, Neville Penfold. So uh, we watch to see what happens. Neville Penfold and Gary Moon gating almost together. That other speedway machine, that's the outfit that Pete Coleman is riding, is on grid five. So we look to see who perhaps will get the better of the starts.
as that play goes for John Hiscock and Shane Lapham as they pass us. Hartwell still there, holding second. So that's going to do them some excellent uh, point scoring. They scored very badly in their first drive. Indeed, have made up for it as the day's gone on. Mark Wells and Kevin Jarvis scored consistently all afternoon and two minutes. You all need to see him in the two. The official result then of race 31, a win for number 184, John Hiscock and Shane Lapham. In second place, number 71, Mark Wells and Kevin Jarvis. Third place, number 12, Tim Bennett. And in fourth place, number 245, Peter Nunn. The winning time, 140.44, 184.71, 12 and 245, 140.44. That of course means that we come to the end of the... From number 31, Graham Jones, hard on his heels. So pretty car, Graham Jones. These two already pulling away on length or two. And Graham Jones shoots round the outside on pretty car. Pretty car is over his Number 72, Kevin Teager. They're ready to go, the gate goes up, they're away. Tandy Smith, Terry Alar, Richard Danford, Dean Garton in that order as we look across to the far side. So Andy Smith back out. Hines, there he is, battling away with uh, Ricky Sanford. And uh, he's got an awful lot of work to do to try and shake him off side by side to go. Dean Garton under pressure. Looks like Gary Lott's come around the outside of Dean Garton. Sanford. In third place, number seven, Gary Law. In fourth place, number 17, Thierry Lair. In fifth place, number 16, Dean Garton. In sixth place, number five, Alan Rossiter. In seventh place, number 29, Paul Mitchell. And in eighth place, number 135, Jonathan Sims.
And the winner's time on 1 minute 19.62. 1 minute 19.62. Now we switch across to the sidecar class with a change to those numbers we gave you for the runners in race 35 because number 17, Dave Steers machinery is uh, unable to be used. So in his place, coming in there comes number 99. Number 99, of course, Peter Colvin and Adam Cowper-Smith. Well, thanks, Tony. Indeed, it's, uh, as you've just said, it's uh, a change to race 35, but I'll be honest, Tony, I'm waiting for confirmation from the pits that we can go ahead with these races. It looks as if the starters are indeed getting themselves ready, but uh, I'm waiting for confirmation on the radio to say that we're going ahead with them. If there was some form of protest from whom or by whom, I don't know, and what it was about, again, I don't know, but we will wait and see what happens at the moment. And this is... Uh, Officially, as the point scorers sit, we've got, coming to the line, number four, Paul Penfold and Peter Jones. Number two, Nell Penfold and Paul Randall. Number 184, John Hiscock and Shane Lapham. Number one, Craig Cheatham and passenger Gary Lane. Number 99, Pete Colvin and Adam Cooper-Smith. And number 24, you wouldn't believe, would you, all afternoon I've been getting this right. I've wrote Rob Wilson in there, haven't I? Of course, number 24 is Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Well, that's another Rob Wilson outfit. That's the other outfit that Rob brings with him. So, Rob Wilson uh, having both his bikes throughout this afternoon in the hands of what can only be deemed as a real Masters champion, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. So they quickly do two laps practice, and then they'll be joining the lineup for me. Oh, indeed, as uh, I can say thank you to Somebody just give me the information that this is, of course, Rob Wilson Jr.'s machine. So, uh, let's say, both outfits here today. I saw them in the pits this morning. Rob Sr. rides the blue outfit. Rob Jr. rides the red outfit. That's the one that Steve Smith's uh, got out on the circuit at the moment. And exactly the same as the solo format. The points sit as they are at the moment. We add to them the points scored in the semi-final under exactly the same structure, and that will give us, in the sidecar case, that will actually give us the six qualifiers for the final, and indeed the six qualifiers for the British Masters. They've made that a bit slightly easier for me. Tony's got it a bit more complicated because he gets eight going into the final, but 12 go through to the Masters. Well, Jim, if I can just jump in, I can give you now the runners in the solo final, race 37 on your program. And uh, I don't know if you can hear me across in the paddock, but uh, we'll try and get you on the radio in a moment or two. They are number 31, Graham Jones. Number 86, Paul Hurry. Number 22, Peter Carr. Number 7, Gary Law. Number 5, Alan Rossiter. Number 9, Andy Smith. Number 17, Thierry Hilaire. And number 172, Colin Earl. Well, by the fact they've got into this final, this means all these are through to the Masters. We haven't sorted out the other people to go with them. But uh, those, these are the riders then who will compete in race 37, the final for the solos class here this afternoon. Well, thanks, Tony, and I'm pleased to see some of the names that uh, I was perhaps expecting to go through the Masters and indeed gone through this qualifier. It's been very, very tough this afternoon. Of course, uh, I was going to say they can relax now, but of course they can't really because uh, that final is worth winning. So that's a straightforward race, but I'm sure a lot of uh, relieved crews in the solo pits. But we get ourselves ready for the first semi-final for the sidecars. Steve Smith right on the inside gate looks to have made a good one. Neville Penfold has made a good sound as well as they come past that for the first time. Paul Penfold going for that uh, almost wrecking line on the outside line. for the first time. John Hiscock up in third place at the moment. Craig Cheatham on the outside of him. But Paul Penfold and Billy Jones it is at lead at the moment. Going into that top corner. Neville Penfold and Paul Randall up in the top of second place. But as they come 
Rosemount Park start four and they completed their second lap. They did four pink fold and Peter Jones that lead. Remember they're unbeaten this afternoon so far. Never pink fold and four rounds. Holding some excellent tight lines, being forced to wait, Craig Cheatham. Go wide on them if there's any way around at all. That's the way that Craig Cheatham's got to go. All in fold and here it goes. Still leading. still on that third place because it looks like John Hiscock has done it up. Paul Finfold keeps his maximum, Neville Finfold gets a second, he and Paul Rand will be sure that they know that that means a place in the British Masters this year. That's what it's all about in the qualifier and they can now greatly react because they know that they've done enough to get through to the Masters, they're going to be competing in the 1992 Masters. That's unofficial, of course, so we'll give it to you officially in a few moments, and Paul Pinfold, we will be seeing him in the Masters. A brilliant performance here at the qualifier. He wins the first semi-final. Semi-final for the sidecars. A win for number four is Paul Pinfold and Peter Jones. In second place, number two, Neville Pinfold and Paul Randall. In third place, number 184, John Hiscock and Shane Lapham. Fourth place, number one, Craig Cheatham and Gary Lane. Fifth place, number 24, Steve Smith and Keith Wall. Sixth place, number 99, Pete Colvin, Adam Calvert-Smith. The winning time, 137.14. 137.14 the time. And Pitts, if you can hear me, we've just heard that the finals, indeed, are correct only saying they're over six laps. Well, that's indeed what we've been told. The finals, remember, they have nothing to do with the uh, qualifying uh, competition here for the Masters. That's to finish off the day. And of course, once you've seen the finals, we can go to the presentation because that's where the riders will be at the end of the day. I think you'll agree with me, it's been a hard day's racing. It can be uh, slightly criticised, but it does mean that we get a strong competition at the qualifier. And I think uh, this year in particular, the competition has been particularly hard in both disciplines. Let's stick with the second semi-final of the sidecars. We've got coming to the line, number eight, Gary Moon and Steve Robbins. Number 71, Mike Wells and Kevin Jarvis. Number 13, John Horsey, Chris Skipper. Number 12, Tim Bennett, 149, Len Foreman, 131, Neil Page. We're underway already. You can see that Len Foreman has made a brilliant start on the inside. Len Foreman goes into that first quarter and beats it. They get to the front, they dive into that pink corner, looking to go the long way around, as you can see, they power that outfit on. But it's not by any means over for that second, third and fourth place. Mark Wells goes through now on the inside of Len Forward, or does he? Well, let him run forward, he does it on. determined to get into the Masters. They said they'd have a good go at grass track this year. They've given up their sidecar speedway to concentrate on the grass track. And then Mark Wells give them a real run for their money. Again, as they go into that top end, they're almost locked together. Yeah, they're almost locked together. hanging on to in the moment. We can watch the splendour of oh, Gary Moon and Steve Robbins as they go past us. This is where the fighting really is going on. Mark Wells definitely trying to find a hole again through his final little wrangle. This is the end. Mark Wells is going to take the eyes off Gary Moon for a moment. I know he's getting close to the second drag. And Lynn Foreman has got problems. So Lynn Foreman has gone out possibly. He's given it to Mark Wells. Lynn Foreman crosses the line with problems. Tim Bennett gets fourth place and John Halsey finishes in fifth. And that was only the semi-final. We've got the final two and done. So here's the psycho you here this afternoon. And it means that we are going to see Gary Moon in the British Masters this year. We're fairly confident in saying, I think, that uh, 
Mark Wells may well get through, but I'll wait and see what happens when they've added all the points up. We've got a result for race 36. It's a win for number eight, Gary Moon and C. Robbins. In second place, number 71, Mike Wells and Kevin Jarvis. In third place, number 149, Lennon Ray Foreman. They cross their lines with their hearts in their mouth. <laughs> in fourth place, number 12, Tim Bennett. In fifth place, number 13, Neil and Mark Page. And in sixth place, number one, my apologies there, number 13 obviously was John Halsey. And in sixth place, number 131, Neil and Mark Page. The winning time, 135.32. Those numbers again quickly. The second semi-final result, race 36, 8, 71, 149, 12, 13, 131. And the winning time, 135.32. <laughs> Fams equal on top points going through from this qualified the Masters. Outfit number four and outfit number eight, Paul Pinfold and Gary Moon. Equal in what is effectively equal third place going through the Masters. Outfit number 71, Mark Wells, and outfit number two, Neville Penfold. So that's four outfits cleaning through. In fifth place, number 184, I'm coming in fifth into the final, that is of course John Hiscock. Then the problem started, equal on points, four outfits, but separated by the highest number of finishing places. In the final goes number one, Craig Cheatham and Gary Lane. So your qualifiers for the final are four, eight, 71, two, 184 and number one. That's how they line up. You've been given the lineup for the solo final, so while the side cars get themselves sorted out, you'll be out with the solos in a very few moments. I can only remind you that there will be a presentation at the end of the day. The beer tent will still be going into the small hours, I expect, but uh, there'll be a bit of celebrating because, of course, it's not just about winning this final now. There's a lot of riders that will be feeling very relieved that they've qualified for those two rounds of the British Masters. So here we go then, they're coming out for the solo final. Well, this is uh, a six lap final, and uh, that's a little bit unusual, but uh, there we are here at Tunbridge, we often do have six lap finals. I hope all the competitors over there realize that. Certainly our flag marshals do. The lap scorers do. They are away, and somebody in trouble. Somebody's down, two down on the bar side. We have a red flag, the race is gonna be stopped. Uh, a bike reared up and Paul Hurry collided with him. Uh, Thierry Allaire got a, a monster a wheelie and I think the bike reared across to one side and Paul Hurry collected the bike I think. Uh, well let's hope they're both there. Uh... Well, Paul Hurry waving his legs about so let's hope that means that uh, He's up, he's on his feet, Paul Hurry's on his feet. Thierry is on his feet. I think that was what one can say as a racing accident. That really wasn't anybody's fault particularly there. Here we go then, on the line once again, the solo final, six laps of high speed solo action, they come into line, a little bit of rolling, somebody trying to get, but remember they've got the, the bar behind the bikes here, he can't do that, Andy Smith coming up the inside. Thank <laughs> you. 
official result of the last final of the day with the big sidecar final. What a tremendous way to finish the British qualifier for 1992. It's been hard, it's been furious, it's been fabulous fast track racing. A win for number eight, Gary Moon and C. Robbins. Second place to them is number four, Paul Pinfold and Peter Jones. In third, number one, Craig Cheatham and Gary Lane. Those are the three crews we'll see on the roster in a few moments. The official result finishes with in fourth place, number two, Neville Penfold and Paul Randall. In fifth place, number 71, Mark Wells and Kevin Jarvis. And in sixth place, number 184, John Hiscock and Shane Lapham. You'll really show your appreciation of what we think has been some super racing here this afternoon. So then, we must be... Getting near, James, would you say? Right then, let's, let's try and make a start. In third place then, in the solo competition this afternoon, and it's good to see him back with the grass track, Peter Carr! <laughs> well, that's the good news. The bad news is we haven't got anything to give you at all, except that Norma's got a nice check. Peter, super to see you, obviously putting a lot of time to the grass now, are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, I'm having a good time, I just hope I can win a few more and the best riding one today. Well certainly I remember you back in that European final, uh, I guess something like that or the world long track would be a name? Yeah, I'd like to get back to something like that, hopefully I can do. Ladies and gentlemen, third place in the Masters qualifier, Peter Carr. Say up Peter please, we'll have all three of you up. Second place, it's, it's a welcome back again to the grass, except it was a long time ago and he, uh, he did it regularly. Ladies and gentlemen, Graham Jones, second place in the Masters Qualifier. <laughs> that's the important place, that's the check you see, or uh, that's the best way. Graham, just a, f just a few words, I know, I think it was back in March at the Speedway show, you were saying you were keen to get back into the grass, well you came back today, how's it gone for you? Well, uh, I was a little bit surprised today, really. I couldn't get off the start for, for starters, but I think uh, everybody was in the same problem. But, um, like here, for example, you need a fast bike, and I've only, this is my second, my third attempt, really. The last time I came here, and it was like, um, when it was too wet, I came off up there and bent my bike, so uh, it was back home, very uh, long way home, that was, too, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm ready to rip. I just sort of want to get a few more under my belt now. Now, we can look forward to seeing you riding a few more uh, national grass tracks, then. Well, yeah, that's the idea, and uh, I mean, Andy today, we was, he was just like so fast, and uh, Andy's very good at keeping his wheels in line, you know, and uh, I was getting tired on two laps to go, and Peter was starting to catch me, and Andy was just like a dot in the distance, so, um, yeah, the best man won today. Ladies and gentlemen, Graham Jones, congratulations on that second place, Graham. Stay up here with us. Well, like we say so often, there's only one winner at the end of the day, no matter how hard they all race, and today I'm sure you'll give a a really rousing reception for the gentleman who did all the winning. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Smith! Uh, congratulations. One of those, and one of those, and a few words. You nearly did it again, didn't you? I mean, this guy has bad luck like nobody has bad luck. What, what did you do to that motor? Uh, the big end went, and I thought, that's it again, no masters, no license. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, it didn't quite turn out like that. Yeah, I suppose if it had a couple of bad rides in my first two races, I would have been out of it. Well, that's, I guess that's racing, but uh, we're delighted to see it actually did come right for you at the end of the day. And things do at last seem to be going pretty well. You've got that World Speedway uh, still in your sights, and the World Long Track to come. Yeah, I just want to keep everything ticking away. I don't, I don't want any uh, breaks like I had last year. Well, we don't want you to have any of those breaks like last year. We just want to see you have continued success. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Smith, the British Masters Qualifier Champion in 1992. And I'll hand across to Jim to talk to the sidecar crews. Thanks, Tony. I can't help thinking that when you stand here like this, Tony's had a much easier job than I'm going to have. 
<laughs> I'm not going to preempt anything. I think you'll agree with me that in both classes this afternoon there was an incredibly amount of hard racing, some fantastic grass track racing, I think, all through the afternoon. I don't think I'd like to have been a competitor starting this afternoon when I looked at that sidecar class because I really couldn't predict, and I watch sidecar racing a hell of a lot as you know, I couldn't predict who the top six were going to be that go through. And they rode exceptionally hard, they made it more difficult as the day went on. But we ended up with three at the end of the day that are going to be up here on the roster, we'll hopefully get a few words with them. I've not spoken to these two guys before, it's good to see them up here this afternoon. In third place, Craig Cheatham and Gary Lane. Get the important bit over first, pick up the check, that's what it's all about, Craig. But it's not been an easy day, has it? You had one or two problems as the day went on? Could say. Um, I thought it was all over when we came off on the top end there. But uh, as fortune has it, we scraped through. So <laughs> at the end of the day, we've, uh, we've made it so I'm pleased. I've... And I've got to say, Craig, that walking around the pits this morning, there was two outfits at the back of your van. You only rode one all day. Right. Well, I've uh, put a hard week's working on my bike this week, and uh, come Wednesday I discovered a serious misfire on my bike. And uh, I'd, I'd like to thank Ivan Matthews very much for the loan of his outfit, with, uh, which uh, without it, it wouldn't have been possible to, uh, to get where he's got today. Well, I think we share your thoughts of that. Ivan, of course, uh, came through the qualifier last year, and you're going to be up against him in the Masters, so that one's going to be interesting. Gary, I've got to bring you in, because uh, those of you that read the press very often will know that Craig was actually advertising for a passenger not too many weeks ago. You've stepped in. Did you expect this sort of result? Not at all. Never. <laughs> but are you enjoying the fact that you stepped in? Very much, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose I could push the point and say what sort of prediction for the uh, Masters themselves. You're going to be there, I hope. <laughs> Sounds like I'm Well, it looks like Craig's just confirmed that. <laughs> I won't push them anymore. I just say to you, third place in the final this afternoon, Craig Cheatham and Gary Lane. <laughs> well, these next two crews I have been used to speaking to quite often, but normally that's at the Speedway circuits. They're great campaigners for Sidecar Speedway. If you read the history of the guy that's going to be up here, you know that he spent a lot of time in Australia. That's where he picked up a lot of other friends, but he is a British person through and through. Indeed, I'm sure he'll be over the moon to say that he's going in the Masters this year. In second place in the final this afternoon, it's Paul Pinford and Peter Jones. Thank you. Well, I don't think I can. We might have to radio for help. Thank you. Would you like to give to the Red Cross, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about the obstacle course, Paul. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> well, he's picked up the important bit by getting the check. Paul, I've got to try and get a few words out of you. I know you must be shattered. Everybody can see that enormous boot that you wear, but... I know you were determined to get through the Masters, the result you expected? Yeah, I'm really pleased. This morning, I sort of, we've been up all night with, uh, with the new grass track bike and we, we had a lot of problems with that, but um, I must thank George Penfold for bringing his speedway bike along and getting us out of the, the muck. Now you're confusing me now. This means that that wasn't your bike, that was George's. Yes. <laughs> I had a new grass track bike. Um, um, uh, from Steve Heath, um, but we, we was up all night building it and it sort of just didn't work out today, but that's what we'll be riding in the Masters. Um, but George Penfold brought his speedway bike along today, so last minute again and got us it. Well, I, I get fed up with saying this too often. It's always like a last minute thing, isn't it? But when you get on them, they go, and indeed that circuit looked brilliant out there. I know you had an unfortunate incident down there at the Battle of Britain, but that looked great this afternoon. Yeah, it's a brilliant track, it, it always is, and Tom puts on a, a brilliant meet and he runs it well, and I'm just pleased to be here. And I've got to have a word with this man, because uh, I don't know whether as many of you know, but at one time you were passenger to Craig, I understand. Yeah, that's right. I was passenger to Craig for the last two years. Thought I'd try a bit of speedway, so got on the back of Paul. And that's where the combination came, isn't it? It was really with the, the sidecar speedway that's taken off, that you've teamed up with Paul, and now sticking with him through the Masters as well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, I suppose I want to try and push for what sort of uh, result they expect in the Masters. Is it going to be yours, Paul? Oh, 
I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to have to wait and see for that. As you can see, they're going to try. I've got one more crew to call up here, but second this afternoon it was Paul Pinfold and Peter Jones. Well, as I say, one more crew to call up. I think you've enjoyed watching their racing this afternoon. But they came down into the Battle of Britain last year and shocked everybody the way they rode on this circuit. They had problems in the final, it wasn't to be. This afternoon, they came here determined to get into the Masters. They're going into the Masters by winning the final. He's already here, it's Gary Moon and Steve Rollins! I think you can tell by that round of applause, Gary, that there's a lot of people pleased to see that one you've returned, one that you're uh, carrying on with the campaign for the British Masters, but a much better result than you've ever had down here before. Yeah, it was a much better track than it's been, except for the first year when we were here. Um, I'd just like to thank um, Tom for putting on a really good track, and I really enjoyed riding here, and I'd love to ride him more often on a track like this, but the Masters will be different on the rough stuff. <laughs> well, that's very true. I'm sure there's one or two organisers here thinking that it might not be too rough, so you never know. It's going to be a hard campaign, though. You've got all the sidecar speedway coming up as well. Yeah, we've actually got a meeting at Reading tomorrow night, so anyone who wants to come down and have a look, there'll be heaps of us loonies riding around there, so it'll be good fun watching. <laughs> well, he always manages to get an advert in somewhere along the line, but Steve, you're very much involved with the sidecar speedway as well. This must have been a bonus to make sure that you're getting into the Masters this year. Yeah, it's nice to get back into the, the Masters again. Um, hopefully it will go well, no promises. <laughs> and I've got to ask whether anybody did take me up on the advert for the leathers. I think they're out there somewhere. They're just shy, that's all. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can find anybody. But the winners this afternoon are very uh, able victors indeed. Gary Moon and Steve Rollins! <laughs> well, as all the photographs get taken, I think, Tony, that range means for us to say really that uh, a brilliant qualifier this year. There's been some excellent racing in both classes. We can only now look forward to both of those Masters rounds and see maybe, perhaps, one of these riders from the qualifier can go on and win the Masters. We obviously look forward to seeing you very, very soon at the grass tracks in your area. If not, we'll see you at those Masters. Bye for now. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And if I can congratulate the club on behalf of the ACU Grass Track Committee, I think they've given us a super day sport. And uh, our thanks to everyone. Don't forget across the paddock, the riders who have to uh, collect qualifying rakes, they're here on the finish line. If you've got to dash away, well please travel safely. If you can hang around, the beer tent's still open, there's still a lot of goodies.